This is how I would connect my front end to my back end if I was building a Next.js application. First, I'm going to create a file that will hold the request and response type definitions for my API. So I'm going to start by making the post request, give it a user ID field. Let me just rename this file to posts because I'm going to put the response in here too. And now I'm going to create the post response. And within that, I just want it to have an ID and maybe a title and a body. And now I need to actually create my endpoint. So I'm going to create a simple endpoint that returns a list of posts given a user ID. I'm just going to add some mock posts in there. So I have it returning two posts right now. And then finally, I can just create my front end. So I'm just going to simply have a button. And now let's just call it get post. And then we need to create a function that will be called when the button is clicked. Perfect. And now we connected the button to the function. And then finally, we need to create the body for our post and then reuse the types that we created earlier. And then now we need to actually make the API request using um, fetch. And to make sure everything is type safe, we need to cast the type of the response to the, again, the type that we created earlier. And then perfect, this should work. Now let's just test it out. Now when I tap get post, you can see it actually returns the results from my backend. Now if I want to change something on my endpoint, I first have to change the type definition. So for example, we might want to add a new from date field. And then now I can actually change it in the endpoint. And then I'll also have to then update that in the front end. But the problem with this is I have to manually make that change everywhere. Okay, here's how I would do the same thing. The first thing I'm going to do is install TRPC in my Next.js project. And then I just need to create my server folder and then copy the trpc.ts file. You can get this on the um, documentation. I'm going to leave a link below so you can easily find all the things you need to copy. So now I need to create my routers folder. This is where I'm actually going to write the code for my um, API endpoints from now on. I'm just going to initialize my app router, import router, and now I'm going to write the endpoints for my posts request. So it's going to be a query that takes user ID as an input. Let me just import Zod first, and then now I've added user ID. So the final thing I need to do is just add the mock post and then return it. So this is very, this is equivalent to what he did earlier, but except this is my endpoint, I'm no longer using the API um, directory. Now I just need to add this file to the API directory. This is what allows the request to be routed through TRPC. And then the second to last thing I need to do is create a utils folder and then copy this trpc.ts file um, in there. Again, I'm just copying in code from the trpc documentation. I'm going to make a link to the documentation um, in, available in the, in the description of the video. Perfect. The final thing we need to do is just change our app.tsx file to wrap everything with trpc and then we're good to go. Now let's just connect our front end to our new back end and we'll see how much nicer this is. Okay, let me just create a new page. And now to connect this page to the back end, I simply have to do trpc.post because that's the name of the endpoint we just created and then dot use query. And then now we can pass in the user ID. So what this is doing is that when the page loads, it's going to make an API request to the post endpoint that we created and it's passed user ID um, one into it. And then we get the posts added to the variable. Perfect. And now let's just add a use effect and put the post as the variable. And then we're just going to console.log the posts every time it changes. And you see when that page loads, we get all the posts printed because that's the use effect. And let me just do that twice. You see all the um, posts are printed to the console. Now, let me just show you what would happen if I tried to change the API definition. So if, for example, I wanted to add a new field called from date to the API, again, in the example at the start, you would have to then manually Add the type definition changes. But in here, when I just change it and my back end, if I head over to my front end, you see there's an error now because it knows that there's a field that is required from the back end that is not given. So the front end is perfectly connected to the back end. The same thing also applies with the response. If, for example, I print out the title of the first post and then I head into the back end again, but instead of adding titles to the field, I change the, the, the field name to something else. Let's say head in, for example change it on both the posts. If I head back to the front end, again, you see it now knows that title doesn't exist in the response. So this is perfect because now the back end and front end are perfectly 
connected and it's super easy now for you to actually start building your application without having to make any manual changes.